Good morning, Cornerstone Community. Pastor Paul here. Thank you so much for joining us for our Sunday service video stream. Currently, we have service at the park at this time, but we wanted to make sure that you had the opportunity to worship with us and to also to receive God's word for you today. Before we get started, let's open up in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity today to dwell in your presence. We come humble before your throne. We come with open hearts, open minds, and open spirit to receive what you have in store for us, but most importantly, to render what you deserve. All glory, honor, power, and strength. You deserve our worship. You deserve our praise. So God, prepare us for mighty work to be done in our hearts, in our lives. For we ask it in the most loving name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Let's sing the song, I Will Trust You Again. my life in 
place my life in your hands and I I will trust you I will trust you again and again and again I will trust you again I will trust you Jesus was standing by the sea. The people crowded around him and listened to every word he said. Jesus saw two boats at the edge of the water. He got into the boat that belonged to Peter. Jesus asked Peter to take the boat away from the shore a little bit. Then he sat down in the boat and taught the crowd of people. When he finished speaking, Jesus said to Peter, go out into the deep water so you can catch some fish. Peter told Jesus, we've worked all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When Peter and his crew put the nets down into the water, they caught so many fish that their nets began to break. When Peter saw this, he knew that Jesus was special and this was a special thing that had happened. Then Jesus told Peter, come and follow me. From now on, you will fish for people. Jesus didn't actually mean they were going to catch people like they caught fish, but he meant that they were going to follow Jesus and tell people about God's love for them. Friends, here's the amazing part. Peter and his friends left their boats and stinky nets and fish on the shore and followed Jesus. Jesus wants you to follow him too. Here are some ways you can follow Jesus. You can follow Jesus by reading about him in the Bible and doing what he says. 
You can also follow Jesus by telling others about God's love. And you can follow Jesus by following others who love him too. So here's what you need to know today, Finder Fish. Everybody say this after me. Follow. Follow. Jesus. Jesus. Good morning, Cornerstone Community. Pastor Paul here. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for our Sunday service video stream. We also have service at the park going on at the moment, but we thank you for joining us, and we know that God has a word in store for you today. I want to start off by just sharing a story. There was an American couple who traveled to a different country for vacation, and they got lost driving through an old, rustic town. With no cell service, they decided to stop by the closest gas station to ask for directions. And they pulled up and they saw an older man working on a car. They said, excuse me, sir, can you give us directions to where the museum is? And he replied, no, no English. But he called out for his son, Yeshua, Yeshua. And his son came out and said, how can I help you? And the couple said, we are lost and we need directions to the museum. The son said, well, first you want to take a right. When you see the field of sheep, you want to, get, to take a left. And then as you take two miles ahead, you're going to see a cross street with intersection. Make a right and you will see a church. Drive one mile until you, see, until you see a large rock sculpture. Then when you see the large rock sculpture, then you're going to take a left. And if you go straight for two more miles, then you should see the museum. The man replied, what kind of directions are those? You need to give me real directions. The son replied, those are real directions. The man replied, how can I remember that? I need, I need street names. Are you able to read the street names? Can you read my language? No, I cannot. But still, you're ridiculous. The son replied, Mister, I am not the one who is lost. The wife replied, Honey, he's right. You are the one who is lost. You better write this down. How many of us need assurance right now to truly know that we are being led by God? Do we allow our pride to get in the way? Are we not being intentional to follow His specific directions for our lives? Are we not allowing the Son to lead us? This morning I've entitled my message, Lead Me Lord. And open your Bibles with me to Acts chapter 2, verse 25. Acts chapter 2, verse 25. And it reads, For David says, Concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face. For he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Isn't this a fantastic definition of faith? Faith is always seeing the Lord in front of you. In other words, no matter what is happening in your life, the good or the bad, you see the Lord leading the way in your life. It is also by living by the confidence of knowing that He is at your right hand. And no matter what happens, you cannot be shaken. And that's what it says in that verse. For David says concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for He is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. This is the Word of God. Let's pray. Lord, we pray, God, that you would lead us according to your perfect will, that you would confirm 
certain areas or situations in our life. Give us direction. Give us clarity. Give us confidence and assurance that we are taking the right path. God, we honor you. And we know that if we trust you, we know, God, that we will not fail. And as your messenger this morning, use me as your mouthpiece to speak your word so that it would change our lives from the inside out. For we ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. So we started off with that first line, I foresaw the Lord always before my face. The word foresaw means to see before us. That is, as present with us, to regard of God being near. It implies to put confidence in Christ, to rely on Him, to expect assistance from Him. This is its meaning here. The Hebrew is, I expected or I waited for. So when you say, I foresaw the Lord, it's that you see the Lord before you. You see the Lord ahead of you and guiding you and leading you. It thus expresses the petition of one who is helpless, of one who is dependent, who waits for the help from God. It is often used in the Old Testament. So it says, I foresaw the Lord always before my face. So that line, always before my face, as being always present to help me and to deliver me out of my troubles. Notice the key word, always. He says, I foresaw the Lord before me, ahead of me, leading me, and the key word, always. Isn't it assuring to know that God is before us always to deliver me, to deliver you and I out of our challenges and our troubles. You know, in Psalms 139 verse 5, David says, you've hedged me behind and before. You've hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. It's comforting to know as a child, when you're a child and you have a parent there who's guiding you, who's with you, who's holding your hand or has their hand upon you, there's a, there's a feeling of assurance. And I love this verse because not only does it show the tenderness of a father, but I love how the concept or what it's talking about in context is actually it's used in a military siege or fortification. It's closely uh, related term is used in reference for a rock or strength. In this context, it talks about guarding a valuable object. So this statement shows the Lord's protection of his people, that he's behind you and he's before you like a military formation, like a military escort to protect someone important. Many times uh, you'll see military vehicles or you'll see the Secret Service. They'll have a military formation or a protective escort protecting someone important. And that's what God is saying. I've hedged you behind and before. I have laid my hand upon you. It's comforting to know that God is always with us, that He's before us and He's behind us. He gots us. He gots our front and He gots our back. Praise Jesus. Amen. He gots our front and He gots our back. You know the saying when they say, I got your back. It means that I'm watching you. I got you. But not only does God have our back, He has our front. What does that mean? He's that He's leading us. He's leading us and He's also protecting us. And that's a beauty about our God. David did not design simply to say that God was just near to help him. But he's also saying that God had a place of honor. What I also love about this saying, He is on my right hand, is that the psalmist thought of the eternal warrior. God as the eternal warrior. Thinks of Him as one who's, even in the conflict of battle, is one who's extending his shield over his comrade who's on his left. So the person on the right would extend his shield to not just cover him, but to cover his comrade in times of battle. And we talk about that he's guarding him from attack. 
He guts your back and he guts your front. And when the Son of Man is said to sit on the right hand of God, as it says in Psalm 110, and also as it says in Matthew 26, 64, the imagery is different and brings before us the picture of a king seated on his throne with his heir sitting in the place of honor by his side. So you see this line means so much. Isn't that encouraging today? Praise the Lord. And then it finishes off with the line that I may not be shaken. The phrase means I will not sink into calamities. I will not be shaken. I will not be given over to the power of my enemies. This expresses the confidence of one even in danger or in great calamity that those who trust him will continue to stand. We will continue to stand because God is our sure foundation. God is our cornerstone. God is the solid rock that we stand upon in Jesus name. So God brings such great encouragement in this verse today. It's so power packed, it's so filled with promises of God. But remember, the promises of God are for those who truly obey Him, for those that truly trust Him. God says, I'll do my part. God says, you can be assured of that. I will fulfill my end of the promise, but you need to fulfill your end of the promise which is trusting and obeying me, says the Lord, to seek my face, to be a person of integrity, to be a person of character, to be a person who is growing in faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to close this morning by sharing about someone who is an inspiration to many around the world. His name is Eric Wehenmayer. And Eric Wehenmayer is blind. Yet on May 25th, 2001, he reached the peak of Mount Everest. Suffering from a degenerative eye disease, he lost his sight when he was just 13 years old. But that didn't stop him. On a mountain where 90% of climbers never make it to the top, and 165 have died trying since 1953, Eric succeeded. Eric climbed not only the top of Mount Everest, and what's so fascinating, what's so inspirational, not only did he climb such a majestic mountain, but he climbed six other major mountain tops. He is one of a hundred climbers to scale what they call the seven summits, the highest mountains on each of the seven continents. How amazing is that? And he did it in just seven years. How did he do it? Determination, diligence, and trust. He succeeded in large measure because he listened well and he followed well. He listened to the little bell tied to the back of the climber in front of him so he would know what direction to go. He listened to the voice of his teammates who would shout back to him, death fall, two feet to your right, so he would know what direction to go. He listened to the sound of his pick jabbing the ice so he would know whether the ice was safe to cross. When we take a perilous journey, when we take a challenging journey, listening well makes all the difference. Letting God lead, letting Christ lead, and knowing that He's before you makes all the difference. So what do you see in front of you? Do you see problems or do you see the Lord leading the way? A great perspective on faith is simply picturing the Lord Jesus Christ leading you as a shepherd leads his sheep. Christ is always before you. Christ is always behind you. And let him lead the way every single day that he is your good, good shepherd. And as he's leading you, he also turns around and smiles at you and lets you know that everything's going to be okay. He lets you know that He's in control of the situation. And many of us need that right now, during these times. Many of us need the assurance of Him turning around and saying, Child, I'm here. I'm still with you. I'm leading you. And not only am I leading you, but I am also behind you. And I'm guiding you every step of the way. And it's assuring to know that Christ is always, always with us. 
and you will not allow us to be shaken. Be encouraged this morning. And my prayer for you is that you will keep seeing the Lord in front of you. Don't look at the turmoil. Don't be fearful of all the things that are going on. Just keep your eyes focused on the Lord. Fix your eyes on Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Don't take your eyes off Him. Just continue to let Him lead. Listen well and follow well. Even in the times you cannot see, even in the times you don't understand, God is still in control and God is faithful. Pray with me this morning. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for your encouragement, God, that you are leading us and not only leading us, God, but you're guiding us and protecting us. Just like this verse says, I foresaw the Lord always before my face. He is on my right hand, and I will not be shaken. God, that brings us reassurance today. Thank you for reminding us that you are in control, and that you're always in control for those who trust your name. Lord, we give you the glory. We give you all the praise and honor. For we ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. And amen. I hope you are blessed and encouraged by that message. I hope it serves as a constant reminder that your God is always before you, that He's on your right hand, and that you will not be shaken if you trust in His name. Have a blessed week. Can't wait till you tune in again, and we hope to see you soon. God bless. Love you all. Be safe. In Jesus' name.